In a previous video, I have shown you this NFT that changes color when you hover over some of these sections. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can do this as well. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashlips and welcome back to my channel. Now, I highly recommend watching this video where we are going to create this dynamic NFT artwork from scratch to the end because I have a very special announcement, especially for those who have followed my journey all this way. So let's jump right in. For this, you are going to need some kind of IDE, a code editor, and I recommend Visual Studio Code, it's free, and you can download this for your operating system. After installing Visual Studio Code and you open it up, this is how it should look. You can now go to File Open or click on Open here so that we can create a new folder for us. This is going to be our NFT and this is just the folder. Double click on that and now you should see that you are in this folder directory. The next thing we can do is to right click and say New File. This will be our index.html file. Make sure you append .html at the end. This index.html file will be the simple web page that we are going to create combining HTML CSS to manipulate the SVG format image that we are going to place in here. Before we start with the code, we need to make sure that we have an extension. So click on this extensions button and search for live server. And here it is. So click on it and say install. After installing, it should look like this. And we can go back to our files. You can verify that you did this correctly by right clicking on the file. And now you should see this open with live server. We are not going to open this yet because we want to write some basic code before that. The basic HTML snippet that we'll start off with looks like this. It specifies that we are going to write HTML and our HTML tags, a head tag, as well as a body tag. And I've added a title. So just copy this quickly and then we'll move forward. For now, we are just going to implement the solution. But if you want to know what each of these tags mean, then feel free to watch my intro course to HTML. Okay, let's move on. The next thing that we'll need is an artwork. Now, I've got this flower man. And as you can see, this flower man is very basic. And that's because I'm going to convert this PNG image into an SVG shaped image. Now, PNG and JPEG and those formats are all raster based. Meaning if you zoom in, you will see pixelation. With SVG, you don't see that because it works on a mathematical equations to work out the shapes and how it scales. And we need this to be SVG because we can also manipulate the SVG code, but we cannot do that with a PNG or a JPEG, for example. So get an image that's very clean and doesn't have a lot of gradients for this next step. There are various ways that you can convert PNGs and JPEGs to SVGs. However, Adobe has a great tool for that, or you can use Illustrator, for example. I'm going to use this because most people don't have access to these programs. So just go to this URL and then drop your PNG or JPEG image in this box. We're going to wait until this is vectorized and made into an SVG that we can download. And there we go. This is now our SVG. Let's go ahead and download this image so that we can import the code inside of Visual Studio Code. Back in our code editor, what you need to do is drag that newly created SVG format image into the side bar. This will essentially add it to that folder but we will delete this very soon. What we are interested in is all of this code. Now remember when I said this is a mathematical equation and all sorts of wonderfulness, 
And indeed, this is all the code that makes up this SVG with shapes. And this is how the artwork is constructed. Keep in mind that this might look a bit different for you, depending on what image you use. Remember, each image is unique, so the code of it will look unique, of course. What you need to do now is select everything, from the top all the way to the bottom. Copy this, and let's go ahead and go to our index.html page. In between the body tags, you're going to paste all of that code. Now that you have done that, we can go ahead and right click and delete this flower SVG. We already have the code in our HTML file. And to prove that, we can now right click and now we can say open with live server. When we do this, we can see our image on the screen hosted on the local host. Now we are ready to manipulate the image whenever we hover over some of the areas. But how do we know what areas we hover over? Well, that is a bit tricky. Because if you look at an SVG format tag, it has an opening and a closing tag. And we can close the whole thing by clicking on this arrow. But in between, we've got these paths. And it is the path segments that actually makes up all the strokes inside of this SVG. We can identify a path by opening it up and in the full attribute, maybe changing this to red. Save this file and then go back to where your live server is hosting the image. We can see that this path in particular is the background because the whole background is now red instead of blue. So let's go ahead and change this back to the original color. And now that we know that this path in particular is the actual background, we can add a class and I'm going to call this BG for background. And now we can close this and go to the next one. Let's change this to red and see what it is. We can see this is the outline of this man. So again, same process, we go back and let's go and give it a class and this may be the outline. And this will be the way how you identify the different paths and also add classes to them. Keep in mind, you can add the same class on multiple different items. So if you get to the flower petals, you can make each flower petal the same class. That way, you don't have to write more style code later on. Now for our next step. Right after the beginning SVG tag, what you need to do is create a new tag and call it devs. In here, we can create a styles tag and this is where we will actually use these classes that we've created and change the color when we hover over them. Let's start off with this background class that we've added to this path. The way we do that is by specifying a dot and then the class's name, BG. Put your brackets and then we can specify what field we want to alter. I'm going to be changing the full color. Let's say we start off with an aquamarine. And then I'm going to copy this and paste it down here. Add these colons, and then I'm going to choose hover. This is a CSS uh, attribute that you can use to manipulate or detect whenever you're hovering over this path. If we do hover over this path, I want this to change to maybe this beige color. Remember, we also have an outline class. So let's go and add that as well. We're going to change the full color here. And this time we're going to make it black because that's how it starts off as. You can also optionally use the hex values like so. Again, let's go ahead and copy the outline. 
duplicate that and add the hover attribute. Now that we have this, we can change the full color and let's make this blue. And now let's go ahead and test it. If we go back to where this is hosted and we start hovering over the different areas, you can see the background and the outline change of this SVG. That's wonderful. The only problem here is that it's extremely big and it would be nice if this fits the actual screen. Before we add that styling that will fix this, I want to make my small announcement. Actually, it's very big. See, for the past year now, I've been making tutorial videos and I really do hope that you have enjoyed them. I will continue to do so, but in the works, I have got some big super courses that will be coming out early next year or even at the end of this year. These big courses will be designed in a way to get someone fully over from Web 2 to understand and get involved into Web 3 and potentially get them a job. So that is what I'm busy with at the back. So if I don't post any videos that often, just know that is the reason. However, you can still help me out tremendously here. If you haven't subscribed yet and you've been watching my content, all it takes is for you to click that button and make my day. Also, leaving a like helps with the YouTube algorithm as we know. And that comment that you leave there, I do read that. And if you have any suggestions for me to implement new things in my courses, let me know and I will read that and also make sure to implement it. So that being said for this amazing announcement, I am very excited and I hope you are too. So let's go on and fix the rest of this code. In order to center everything out nicely, here in the head section right below the title, let's add a styles tag. And in here, we're going to say that the HTML needs a background color. I'm going to make this black just to give it a neutral background color. And then we can also target the HTML, the body, and the SVG. The styling that we want to add is maybe for the width to be 100%. And for the height, we can make it 100 vertical height for our margin we're going to make it zero and for the padding zero as well just in case now that we have this we should see a centered image and here we go there's the final result and now if you hover over the sections you can see it change color you can go very fine and do this for all the petals as well. And explore, be creative. And use this and let me know what you've created. Remember that the entire image is in this index.html file. This is a file on its own. And if you open it up with any browser, this is what you will see. How magical is that? Code is wonderful when you get to play around with it. I really do hope that you've learned at least something in today's video as well as enjoyed it. If you did, like I said, let me know in the comments. And as always, have an amazing day. See you in the next video. Cheers for now.